It's Web Wednesday. It is a Wednesday, but I'm in Bangkok at the Standard Chartered booth. But I'm not here to talk about traditional banking. I'm here to talk to Ben Cheng, founder of Our Sky from Hong Kong. Over to Ben. Here we are with Ben Cheng, CEO of FormX.ai. Actually, he's the CEO of Our Sky. Ben, you're from Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing in Thailand? <laughs> okay, so this is Monday 2020 in Bangkok. So uh, the reason why we are here is like, actually like for the last few years, we start having more and more like clients in the Southeast Asia countries. So uh, obviously we want to explore and like uh, Monday 2020 is one of the like really like uh, popular vibrant uh, expo for the uh, financial fintech industry. So that's why we are here in Bangkok meeting all the uh, other partners, uh, clients, financial clients in the South Asia. It's quite area. unusual though for a, yeah. for a Hong Kong company because normally Hong Kong yep. you know, is, is like a finance center, right? Yep. Hong Kong, Singapore. Mm. When people think of finance, they don't think Thailand or Bangkok. Mm. <coughs> they think like, you know, maybe Hong Kong, Singapore, mm. Shanghai, maybe now Dubai. Yeah. So uh, what, are, what are you finding, uh, like the audience here is, yeah. what do you think about the people that you're meeting here? Yeah, I think it's really interesting, like, is that like, if you don't come here, you do not know, like, there are so much variety of the, like, the different, like, maybe due to culture, regulation, or just the ecosystem for the financial uh, services, fintech startups, over different country in SEA. Mm. So uh, we are always like more familiar with Hong Kong or Singapore, but then when you come to like uh, Philippines, then like, we learned that, okay, so now they're asking big corporate to notarize document. And then maybe there's like different culture in, in Thailand on paper document works. So these are all the interesting thing you will only know by talking with the partners doing things locally here. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, I, I, you know, as you know, I left Hong Kong a year ago, mm. and I was amazed. Like in, in Thailand, in Bangkok, mm. all of the shopping malls have loyalty programs, mm. but and their apps are quite sophisticated. But you still have to take a pile of receipts <laughs> yeah, yeah, to yeah. some poor, poor girl or guy in the reception who goes through your receipts. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. tell us a little bit about what uh, what you're doing with Formex. Is it is it uh, using AI? What, what is it that you're doing? You've obviously got .ai in the name. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, Formex AI basically like we provide an API and like we have some BWIN model like invoice, receipt, so that like we can like take a image capture of a mobile phone and then return a structured document. Like what it means by structured document, like for example, um, on a receipt, like we want to know like what's the total amount, what is the merchant name, what do you buy, date, time, etc. We want it to be structured so that computer can process it. So like you mentioned shopping mall, mm. so we have a lot of uh, shopping mall customer in Hong Kong. Actually, we have one in Philippines that is like Ayala Mall. Mm. And then what they do is like, they have a loyalty program. You, you use your mobile phone, take a photo of the receipt, and then you've got a loyalty point automatically. So that's what we do. That's pretty good because I mean, I, I know now the, the kind of manual version, mm. you wait nine days or yep. you, know, you, you wait and you pray, right? You don't know. Yeah. So that, that's, but that's uh, like with retail. What are you finding is the is the use case here? Because it's, mm. I guess here it's more like finance, security, yep. uh, insurance. Mm. What what are you finding is the use case here? Yeah. So uh, amongst our client population, like I think there is like three industry related. Yeah. One is like simpler, like maybe like uh, securities broker firms. They do KYC. Yeah. So obviously they need to send a lot of ID, passport, address proof, business registration document, etc. Right. So another one is insurance. Then insurance, we have some clients who are using uh, Formex for uh, scanning like medical claim or this sort of like application oh, documents, right? And then uh, banking. Then banking, like there's tons of use case, uh, but it's also very complicated. So to be honest, we are still navigating it. And do you, because you're dealing with such sensitive information, mm. Do you find it, it helps or it's a hindrance to be a Hong Kong company um. or do they don't really care? I mean, I guess, you know, if you're technology from the US, mm. maybe there's, there's kind of a little bit of friction. Yeah. If you're from Hong Kong, do they yeah. feel like you are, you are more understanding of their, of their cultural and kind of business mm -hmm. needs? Or? Well, I think uh, people does have some concern, like especially like for a variety of reasons. But then on the other hand, uh, at the end, like we find that most country require like either like uh, they would have some either some regulation of like the, the data have to be local 
processor or they have to be like go into like a certain region. So actually like for Formix AI, we actually have a region in Singapore. Just cause we have some clients in Singapore require data to be processed locally. So, oh, so you'll be on the, you won't be on the cloud, you'll be in on premise yep. or you'll be? Uh, yeah, maybe that's in Singapore. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. What about linguistically? Because if you're doing mm. data collection and you know, mm. Thai, Chinese, mm. Vietnamese, mm. they're all very different languages. How, mm. are you, how are you tackling that? Yeah, actually that is a really tricky one. So uh, the thing for us is like whenever we go to a new region, we will like try to collect samples locally as much as we can so that we can use those sample data to train our machine learning model. Um, but we also try to make our product like training new model as easy as possible. So right now we actually have a model we call it instant model. So say you can just give up one or two samples and it will already give you like a pretty good 80% uh, to the like fully trained up model. So that when the customer have some document types that is like never seen before, not received, not invoiced, then they can still uh, use it quickly and try to build something on top of it. And is 80%, are they happy with 80% or they want 100% or what's the... Yeah, of course. Do you have to top it up with human mm. intervention or is it all, all kind yeah. of technology? Uh, yeah, of course, uh, higher is better. But then like the thing is like AI and OCR technology, this sort of technology right now, we can't do it like 100%, right? Yeah. So at the end, like I think it's more about like how do we design a process that try to automate and speed things up as quick as possible. Yeah. So like uh, for shopping mall case, maybe we'll look at like, yeah, the redemption of uh, the redemption points a month. If it's low, low enough and then if some data match good enough, then we go to a auto process flow if it doesn't go to some review, and if the worst case, many review. But at the end, it is about client um, experience. So if you can make like 80% of the uh, paper go through like a quicker flow, do it in uh, minutes instead of days, then everyone happier. That's true. And you're, in terms of AI, because now you know the AI world's still early days, right? Yep. Do you? Do you take the data and you throw it at a mm. at an LLM? Are you are you using OpenAI or mm. Llama or where in terms of the AI kind of supply chain? Mm -hmm. Where are you? How do you work within that supply chain? Um, so right now the core document understanding model uh, is still a uh, proprietary custom trained model. Okay, uh, so it belongs to you. So yeah. Okay. The main reason is because like for a few reasons. Uh, first thing is accuracy. So if you use an LM model for this kind of task, the accuracy can't be improved too much, yeah. right? Secondly, it's latency. Yeah. Like, LM is expensive to do it, but we do starting to apply LM in various ways. Like for example, to generate training data. Okay. Like, like we can like generate much more training data with fewer samples. To train your own. Yeah, to train the model, that's one okay. thing. Another thing is like, uh, we start having some client want to do some data analytics. Mm. Like, so for example, we can say, hey, uh, these are the product people buy, but now we can give you the category of it so you can do more analysis on that. Oh, I see. But yeah. is, there a, is there a privacy issue when you're mm. using these LLMs? And mm. because obviously if you're talking about like, you know, identity or security, mm. Mm. Uh, it's slightly different from like points for yeah, transactions. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there must be a, 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 yeah. a, a safety or privacy issue, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you deal with that? Yeah, so uh, internally, we have a PII detector. So we actually don't send any PII to LM models um, unless it is like a local one. Mm. So uh, to avoid like accidentally sending those kind of privacy data uh, to a third party provider. Got it. Yeah, and then another thing is like we also allow our users to disable and enable certain features so that like they, if they don't want to use that, they don't have to. And um, how do you make money? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, <coughs> obviously. You're still wearing a blue t shirt, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, but uh, yes. When are you going to do your IPO? <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, we charge something like per pages um, okay. <coughs> with our per client. Scan. Yeah, per scan. Okay. Yeah, so. That must be high volume, though, right? Uh, yeah, we, well, we have some online uh, yeah. customer. So like for example, like few weeks ago, we have someone who randomly signed out and then he's actually like uh, a political campaigner in United States. Uh, so he's paying a small amount, but we also have some like a uh, huge client, like, uh, like, like, like Singapore M1. Wait, 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 rewind, rewind. Yeah. How are you working with a political campaigner? What, what, what ah, you're, okay. You're so, helping them find out right, genuine voters as opposed to fake voters? <laughs> it's all fake, <coughs> according to that, the previous. <coughs> Yeah, actually, the, that story is interesting, right? So um, they sign up, they pay, and then we do not know what they are using it for. 
So we emailed them, asked them, yeah. okay, so what are you using it for? Yeah. And then they told me like, yeah, actually we are looking for uh, more donors. So how do they do it? It's like they use it to scan the documents from the government who like list out other donors information. And then oh, they- it's publicly listed? The donors? Yeah, yeah, oh, they I told me- yeah. Political parties need to have publicly, it's- Yeah, so oh. they know who to outreach for, for more donation. That's clever. Yeah, that's careful. That's very clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're mining the donor data- Yeah, yeah, To yeah. then pitch to- Yeah, pitch for that. I wonder how they're pitching. I wonder if they're using like deep fakes to pitch, right? Or like, that's scary. That's yeah. Scary. So, um, well, congrats on being here. What, what, any special offers you have for the good old Web Wednesday Pang <laughs> Yeah. Any, uh, <laughs> any yes. just so, just so for Web Wednesday Yeah, so uh, we have a QR code on the video and like uh, registering over the, uh, that website would give you a one month free trial of our service. And like, uh, just come talk with us. We will be uh, trying to help as much okay, as we cool. can. So, I'll put the uh, QR code on here, but thanks a lot, Ben, and Thank good you. luck.